G'day. Well, we're back with another integral, and this time it doesn't involve trigonometric functions or exponentials, and uh, in fact it's not logarithmic either. You can see that we have a slightly complicated feature here in that the denominator and the numerator are both squared, but if we use the y squared on the bottom and take the derivative, we don't have the derivative on the top. So it's not a classic logarithmic pattern either. Uh, basically, our best bet here, since this is all in one expression, is probably to separate it into two terms and do some expanding and see what we have. So, we would get y squared on y minus 1 on y all squared dy. This, of course, is the integral of y minus 1 on y all squared dy. Now, if the square wasn't there, this would be quite straightforward. That's your simple uh, polynomial function. And integrating that, you get y squared on 2. And this is your logarithmic function because the derivative of y with respect to y is 1. So this would be y squared on 2 minus log y plus c. This complicates matters. And I'm now very, very glad that that's not 23 or 12 or something large because it actually will be easier if we expand. And if I expand this, this is a perfect square. So I square the first, get y squared. I double the product. Now, interestingly, y times 1 on y is 1. So doubling that gives me that. And then I square the last. Which, by the way, oh no, I'll leave it like that. I'll do that in the next step. If you want to confirm that, do this on the side of the page, multiply it out, and you'll find you get y squared. Twice the product will give minus 2, and the square will give that. Now, the reason I hesitated is it's often good to write that as y to the minus 2. In fact, I'll do that right away. because it makes our integration that much easier, or more easy. Let's integrate. We have three separate terms now. That was the benefit we got from breaking everything up and expanding. And the three separate terms, integrating this gives us y cubed on 3. That's a straightforward, quite a straightforward integral. This is even more straightforward. And this one, is going to be, we add 1 to this, and we write that on the bottom as well. Same as we added 1 to this to get 3 and write it on the bottom, uh, plus c. So if we tidied that up, we have y cubed on 3, mine, oh, where did that appear from? I didn't hear you correct me, I'm sorry. But there we go. I do apologise. 2y now we could have a positive on a negative, so it's negative. We don't bother writing a denominator of 1. And y to the minus 1 we could write as 1 on y. And there it is. It was just a peculiar little integral, and it didn't fit any of the normal patterns. So we, we resorted to breaking it up, and because that was a small power, actually expanding it. So we got a number of simpler terms and it resolved quite nicely after that. I hope you've learned something, and I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for watching.